This is the locker room where the coaches of Hassan University talk sports. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the locker room. I'm your host, Brian Seidlinger. Pleased to be joined here today by head coach Warren Caruso and senior point guard Raheem Anderson. Gentlemen, thank, first of all, thank you both for being here. Coach, I'd like to start with you, if that's okay. Sure. You guys have been practicing for the better part of a month now, maybe a little over a month, with just the two exhibition games against UMaine and UMaine Fort Kent. Your regular season gets underway tomorrow. After a month of really just practicing and beating up on each other, how excited are you this time of year to finally get going? Well, it seems like it's a long stretch. I mean, we've had 23 practices and, and two scrimmages, and you know, it's really good up until this week. And that's like, oh my God, when can we when can we play? And uh, so we guys did a really good job handling this week of, of getting through the grind, and you know, we're really thrilled to get on the floor tomorrow and and kind of test ourselves against a you know a common opponent, someone that we've we've played every year since I think 1972, and. Um, I've had some tremendous success in recent years over them, but it's a, a bit of a rivalry game and a little added something to it this year. We've turned it into the Alumni Cup, so we've got a, a cup that the winning team will take back to their to their place or, or will stay in St. Joe's, whichever it is, and, and then next year the cup will come back and we'll do it again. So we'll add a little something to the meaning of it, and you know I think we've got a big group of alumni coming, so it should be an exciting weekend for us. Raheem, how anxious are the players? That's the coach's point of view, but how anxious are the players to finally get going and get on the floor and play some regular season basketball against St. Joe's tomorrow. Honestly, they're very focused. You know, I think something we've been talking about a lot in the preseason. The guys, as soon as they set foot on campus, they're ready to go and ready to kick the season off. So they're super excited, and we can't ready for we can't wait for tomorrow. Is it like Christmas tonight? Something is it going like to be that. like Christmas? <laughs> just can't wait to get on the floor tomorrow and yep. hope in your presence. Yep, something yeah, something like that. Yeah. We really yeah. can't wait. The first practice is like Christmas Eve, and the first game is like Christmas, except that there's, there's 30 days. Sure. In <laughs> <laughs> All right. You have a, a lot of players returning. <clears throat> excuse me, from a team that's won two straight conference titles. How is it? How is it different to coach players who have already won, veteran players who have already won, as compared to a, like a younger team that is still trying to get to where your teams have already been now the last two years? Well, I think it all, it's all about perspective. And, and I think this, the group that returns uh, returns hungry because we haven't you know, fulfilled the goals that we've wanted to in previous years. I mean, we, we've won a championship, which is, you know, we don't take that for granted at all. We know how much work and sweat equity that goes into that. And, um, and, and we know we've got we've to have that focus again this year. But... But our goal is, is to play beyond that and, and uh, you know, advance the NCAs and, and move past the first round and, and you know, in, in, into a deeper run that, that it can be. And so uh, we've got a group that's hungry, and they're, they're, that's, that's a great place to be. We've added some young talent as well. So uh, we've been extremely competitive and very focused and uh, really, really feel good about our starting place. Uh, you know, when we look at where we've been the last couple of years, we, we think that gives us an opportunity for a better ending place. Is this, you've been doing this a long time. Is this one of the more veteran teams that you've had in your career, your coaching career? No, not really. I mean, we've only got uh, really uh, two, two seniors and, and two juniors. Uh, really, as far as three- and four-year players, we've only got three or four of those. So it's not, not really a veteran team. Our best players are veterans. Uh, but, you know, the group of four sophomores played a lot last year, and, and we're going to count on four or five freshmen this year to play. So, you know, you look back at the 13-14 team, I think we had nine juniors and seniors. That, that was probably one of the most veteran teams we've had. But this one's got a nice mix because there's, there's some youthful enthusiasm. There's some, some talent to make it competitive up and down the roster, and, and we've got great seniors. So we're, we're excited. Where do you think, with a, a full season in front of you, where are you strongest, and where, would you, where do you think you need to see the most improvement before mm -hmm. the, you get to the end of the season? Coaching probably is where I'd start. Yeah. You know, really got to improve in that. Would you end. agree with that? Yeah. Is coaching your weakest? Is coaching the weakest thing about Hudson basketball right now? Uh, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think, yeah. I uh, you know, really, it's it's meshing the group, right? I mean, we've got uh, what we we'd say six or seven guys that played minutes last year, uh, three three upperclassmen with, with with Raheem and, and Mitch and Justin Martin, uh, that now have to mix with what what could be five or six new guys, and and what is everyone's role and how they all play out and. And um, so I think that's probably our biggest challenge. And then, then secondly, you know, looking at what do we need to do to, to be a championship team again this year? And I think that there's a challenge there with, with trying to three-peat and one in four out of five. And we're going to have a big target on our back, and we've talked about those things and, and elevating our level of play to make sure we're prepared for that. But, you know, we've we, we got to have a, a, a heightened level of, of understanding of what, what's ahead of us and, and the challenges ahead of us. And, and so I'd say those two things are, are what we, we probably talk most about. Briefly, you got less than a minute left. This guy has just been uh, nominated third team, uh, Division Three All American, fifth year senior. What could you speak a little bit briefly about what he's meant to the the Hassan program here? 
Well, Raheem's got a great career. I mean, uh, the numbers speak for themselves. But I think uh, impactfully, the, 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 his, his, his development as a leader is really the, the piece of the puzzle that's going to come into play this year. Uh, I think we saw it at the end of last year and in, in, in the championship run, and, and I think it's going to be more evident this year um, with, with, with the leadership that he's, he's developed and, um, and, and the guys following him you know, into, the, into, the, into the battle, so to speak. So we're really excited to see that. Okay. We'll, we'll, with that, we'll take a break. We'll come back and talk to Raheem a little bit more right after this. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix the beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olives, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. This is the story of a boy who is very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, they want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. And welcome back to The Locker Room, the show that introduces you to the athletes and coaches of Husson University. I'm Brian Seidlinger, your host. Pleased to be joined with head coach Warren Caruso of the men's basketball team and senior point guard Raheem Anderson. Guys, again, thank you for joining us. Raheem, we'll turn to you now. You have been, as I mentioned earlier, nominated uh, third team All-American in Division Three. You are the first player in program history uh, to be nominated with that honor. Tell me, how did you find out uh, when that came down? Um, honestly, I found out through Coach in the locker room. Um, we told the team before practice as well. And it's a great honor. Um, I feel like I've been able to have a lot of success since I've been at Hudson, um, team-wise and individually. And it's great to, to kind of set the tone, the tone for the next line of players coming up. Um, with me being the first third team All-American, <clears throat> I feel like younger players will see that and understand that the sky's the limit and they'll keep pushing. And that's, that's a big thing for me. So he told you before practice in front of the whole team? Yep. What, and what was, the, what was your reaction? What was the team's reaction when that, when that was announced? Um, we were all shocked. <laughs> a couple guys actually saw it on Facebook a little bit earlier. Um, I didn't see it, so that was the first time I was getting the news. And they, and they kept it a secret. They didn't. Yeah, yeah nobody, nobody told Nobody me. hit you up on the phone <laughs> and said, dude, congratulations. No, nobody told me. Um, I got big hugs and congrats after in the locker room. But we're really close as a family, so an accomplishment like that, the guys always celebrate with me. Sure. That's great. We had um, Coach Gabby Price and Robinson St. Art on from the football team a couple weeks ago, and I asked Robinson's from Florida, as you are. You're from uh, Miramar, Florida. Yeah. And I asked Robinson, how in the world does a guy with his talent, with, with all the choices out there, from, from so southern Florida end up in Bangor, Maine? How did you end up at Hudson University from Miramar? The weather. <laughs> Was it the weather? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but that's the question, because it's easy to understand why someone from Maine would go to Florida. But wh how, how does a guy from Florida with your talent end up all the way in little Bangor, Maine? Honestly, um, well, I met Coach Caruso at a showcase in Florida um, after my senior year. And we, we met a couple times, had a couple good conversations, and I felt like he was the most persistent coach. Um, a lot of coaches I spoke to, um, yes, they sold their dream, and they told me, uh, made a lot of promises, and I had a lot of expectations. But what Coach Caruso did is he spoke to me as a person, and he spoke to me consistently. And I felt like over the summer, we built a strong relationship, and I wanted to try something new. That's interesting, because Robinson's answer was similar. It was persistence. Um, from the coaches to get him up here. How long did it take you to settle into Bangor? I know it's culturally and, and of course, the weather-wise, it's very different. You've been here five years now. So mm -hmm. how, how long did that take? 
Um, honestly, after the first semester, which was pretty rough for me, um, mm -hmm. I remember having a couple of phone calls with my mom that first semester telling her I probably made a mistake and I'm getting homesick and I'm nervous, I want to come back. And with the basketball team and some help from Coach Caruso, after that first semester, I think I was pretty settled. It's your senior year. Obviously, you have team goals, as Coach Caruso talked about earlier. Do you, do you, have, do you set personal goals for yourself before the season starts? Um, as far as personal goals, you know, as a player, I just always want to get better. I feel like um, averaging 20 points or 25 points, it's easy to set a goal like that. But once you get there, what happens next? And I feel like if I, if I can just focus on every day and really just focus on making myself better and making my team better, that's my, that's my only personal goal. And you said, what happens next? And that would be my next question. So you're a senior. You've got 25 plus or so games left at, at, in your Hudson career. What's next for Raheem Anderson when this is all done? Um, that's a great question. Um, I've had aspirations of playing professional basketball since I was young. So that's definitely something I want to uh, push forward to. Um, over the summer, I've had an opportunity to train kids um, in the Worcester County area for basketball. And that's a newfound love for me. So that's something I plan on getting into at some point in the future. A rustic county. Yeah. You ever, you ever dream of being in a place like a rustic county when you were growing up in Miramar, Florida? <laughs> no, I never have. And it was crazy. Um, my first time up there, I actually drove by an uh, Amish family. And <laughs> that was something completely different for me. Um, being from Miramar, Florida, you used to drive by Lamborghinis and BMWs. And seeing something like that was really humbling. I'm glad I got the experience. Sure. Well, listen, guys, thank you very much. We know you guys are very busy, so we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Good luck uh, with the upcoming season. We're looking forward to watching you guys do, do what you do out there. Thank you. Thank you. When we come back, we will talk to you about our Hassan Athletes of the Week. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Give me back! They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. And welcome back to The Locker Room, the show that introduces you to coaches and players from Husson University. Before we went to break, we were pleased to be joined by men's basketball coach Warren Caruso and senior point guard uh, Raheem Anderson. Now we turn our attention to our players of the week, and they are John Smith, the running back from the Husson Eagles uh, football team, and Anna Marie Provencal from the hockey team. John Smith ran for over 1,900 yards this year and 28 touchdowns. Anna Marie Provencal had 11 saves in a shutout win over number five Babson, the program's first win over a ranked opponent in its history. That will do it for this edition of The Locker Room. If you'd like to see this or any other edition of The Locker Room, please go to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Thank you guys very much, appreciate it.